he will grant unto you, that he will grant unto me, that he will grant unto us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. Everything holding us back, everything is not broken. Everything holding you back, everything is not broken. He delivers from our enemies that we might serve him without fear. Look at verse 75. How do we serve him in holiness and righteousness before him? Tell me the rest over there. I said, read the last words over there. All the days of our life, I will not backslide. You will not backslide. We will not turn back. We will not go back. Whatever the challenge by prayer, by faith, we're going to overcome. And we will continue to serve the Lord in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. He has done it, and you will see the effect in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 13, who has delivered us. That's me. I said, that's me. Why don't you say that's yours? Who has delivered you from the power of darkness, and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, when did that happen? Look at verse 14. In verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. He has forgiven your sins. He has saved your soul. He has brought you into the kingdom. You are redeemed. And because of that, he has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness and he has brought you into the kingdom of his dear son. Let's come back to the Psalms, Psalm 18. And we're reading from verse 6. Here is the testimony of a miraculous deliverance. He delivers. He'll put testimony in your mouth. And you know, you must testify. You must testify. Don't just say, you see, I praise God in the corner of my room, come out. And then before all the other believers, like uh, David, like the psalmist gave testimony, he said, I have testimony of miraculous deliverance in uh, Psalm 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. He says, can I give you my testimony? I prayed, I cried, I called, and he heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him even into his ears. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, he continues with the testimony. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. In verse 17, he says, he delivered me from my strong enemy. That will be your testimony. That was his testimony. And he said, I'm telling you, this God is mighty. And he is my rock. And he is my shield. He is my buckler. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They were too strong for me. Hold on. Not too strong for my Lord. They were too strong for me. Not too strong for my God. They were too strong for me. Not too strong for my Redeemer. Not too strong for my Deliverer. Because of that, no matter how strong those enemies are, deliverance has come unto you and for you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, they prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. In verse 19, it says, he brought me forth also into a large place. They wanted to confine him. They wanted to restrict him. They wanted to push him and make him stay and pin him down in a corner so that he will not spread his wings. And the Lord said, no, that confinement is not for you. I said that confinement is not for you. And he brought him forth. It's going to bring you forth. It's going to bring you out. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. 
And you say, I wish the Lord will delight in me. He delights in you. That's why as you come to the New Testament, he calls you beloved, beloved, beloved. A number of times, he delights in you. He will deliver you. Are you sick? Today, he's going to deliver you from that sickness. Are you harassed? Are you tormented? Are you oppressed? Today, he's going to deliver you from that harassment because he delights in you. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says that the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hand, uh, as he recompensed me. Verse 21, uh, in verse 21, it says, For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not wickedly departed from uh, my God. As long as I keep staying uh, with my God, he delivers. As long as I keep staying with my God, he overcomes all the challenges in my life. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, it is God that guardeth me with strength. You'll be stronger today than you were yesterday. You'll be stronger for the challenges before you today at the present time than any other time in your life. It is God that guardeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Underline that, that's for you. He maketh my way perfect. Every crookedness and every imperfection and every difficulty, every turn meandering in the way, he'll make your way perfect. Every pothole, he was going to level everything. Every valley is going to level everything and is going to make your way perfect. Look at verse 35. In verse 35, here is the psalmist saying, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Here the psalmist is giving testimony and is to lead you to also examine your life and count your blessings and see all that the Lord has done for you. Rather than saying, I don't have this, I don't have this. Don't look at what you don't have yet. Look at what you have. Look at what you possess and look at the great things the Lord has done for you. Thou hast given me the shields of thy salvation and thy right hand has holding me up and thy gentleness has made me great. And thy gentleness has made me great. You know, my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter there, there are people in the world, they think like the world, they think when they are aggressive, they're going to become great. They think when they are violent, they're going to become great. But the Lord said, I am lowly and I'm meek and I will give rest unto your soul. And he says, learn of me. And when the gentleness of Christ comes into you, actually, you will go places, you will climb mountains, you will cross oceans. When the gentleness of the Lord comes upon you, you're not fighting for anything. You're not aggressive for anything. Everything that is meant for you will come to you. And the gentleness of the Lord will make you great. I'm looking now at number three in this section, the time of our marvelous dispensation. We're looking at uh, Psalm 18. We're reading verse 37. And we're reading verse 40. We're looking at Psalm 18. And we're reading verse 37. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. Hold on there now. You see, there are people, they do not understand the dispensation of that time and the dispensation of this time. Here David said, in his own dispensation, at his own time, under the old covenant, I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. You see, uh, the Lord is telling us we need to recognize the dispensation in which we live. I'll show you that later. Look at verse 40. In verse 40, it says, in verse 40, Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies. In that dispensation, that's how they dealt with enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. That was their dispensation. Look at our own dispensation now. Ephesians chapter 1, we're reading from verse 9. Ephesians chapter 1, 
We're reading from verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. Verse 10, in verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and are on earth, even in him. It's talking about a new dispensation. The old dispensation is gone. The dispensation of the patriarchs of old, of the princes of old, of the prophets of old, all that dispensation has been swept aside. Now we have the new dispensation. Look at uh, chapter 3. We're looking at chapter 3 of Ephesians, and we're looking at verse 2. Ephesians chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, what? It says now, the dispensation of the grace of God. That's the time we're living now, from the time of the cross, from the time at Calvary, when Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. A new dispensation began from the time of Christ when he said, it is finished. A new dispensation began from the time when the Holy Ghost came upon those disciples and the church became energized, empowered by the Holy Ghost. A new dispensation began from the time when Jesus said, now go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every creature, every creature, to the Jew and to the Gentile, to the near and to the farther away. Now a new dispensation started if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word. Then in verse 3, it says in verse 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote therefore in a few words. And then in verse 4, it says in verse 4, whereby when you read, when you read the word of God, no, this is the dispensation in which we are living now, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now, in this dispensation, what do we do? That dispensation of the time of David, we have seen what they did, how they dealt with enemies, how they crushed their enemies, how they put their feet on the neck of their enemies, how they snuffed life out of their enemies. What do we do now in our own dispensation? Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 43. Matthew chapter 5, we're looking at verse 43. It says, Ye have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. You have heard of another dispensation of the past. Love your neighbor, hate thine enemy. A new dispensation has now come with the coming of Christ. Look at verse 44. In verse 44, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. A new dispensation has now come. In verse 45, it says that she may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Let's look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, we're reading from verse 20. Here is what we do now in our own dispensation. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If thine enemy hunger, don't say that's good for him. That's another dispensation. And don't say he will starve to death. That's another dispensation. In this, our dispensation now, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt give coals of fire on his head. In verse 21, in verse 21 it says, Be not overcome of evil, but 
overcome evil with good. Don't pay them back in their own coins. Don't strike the enemy as he has tried to strike you. He has done evil. Repay with good and overcome evil with good. And you will have a testimony. You will discover the strength of the Lord and the Lord himself will preserve you in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. In point number three, we're looking at the perfection of our trustworthy Savior and Redeemer. The perfection of our trustworthy Savior and Redeemer. Look at Psalm 19 verse 7. Please open your Bible, Psalm 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Hold on there. Now, as a child of God, what directs us, what motivates us, what instructs us is the law of the Lord because that is the only perfect thing. As you look at any man, any man in the past, any man at present, you're not going to see perfection just hanging around everywhere. If you're going to be directed, if you're going to be controlled by that which is perfect, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You see, the lives of people around, whoever they are, they might be great people, they might be popular people, they might be influential people. In whatever section of life they might be, you'll find imperfection in their lives. That's the reason why you will not be directed, you'll not be controlled, and you will not be moved by the lives of other people. I want to be like so and so, uh -uh, that's not enough. I want to be like such and such, that's not enough. It says it is the law of the Lord that is perfect, and that is what converts the soul. When you look at the watch of the Lord, when you look at the law of the Lord, and you look at your life, you see how you are very far away from the perfect will and the perfect wisdom and the perfect word of God and that will bring conviction to the heart and then you say, Lord, if I continue like this, all the knowledge I've got in the education of the world, all the examples I've got in all the heroes of the world and all the practices I've seen in all the communities in the world, they have not helped me uh, to be uh, nearer and nearer unto you. And this law of the Lord now comes to me. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see, we're like, we're stupid. It's like we are simple terms. We know nothing and we, be, we behave foolishly. It is when the testimony of the Lord comes in uh, that makes us, gives us assurance and we now know this is the way, what key in it, all our simple turn and all our simplicity and all our stupidity, everything will vanish away. All our simpleness will vanish away. It says the testimony of the Lord is sure and it makes wise the simple. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us the statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes of the Lord are right. I cannot say that about the behavior you see in the community and about the practices you see in the community, about the actions and reactions you see in the community, but you can say this about the statutes of the Lord. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. It's the commandment of the Lord, it's the word of the Lord that is going to set us right. All have seen and come short of the glory of God, but then we're justified freely by faith in the word, in the sacrifice of the Lord. In fact, it tells us now, after we're justified, the way we move and the way we act in Psalm 119, we're looking at verse 9. Psalm 119, we're looking at verse 9. It says, wherewithal shall a young man, a young woman, wherewithal shall a young person, an older person too, wherewithal shall a person is a child of God, cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. According to thy word. You know, when you switch over to the word of the Lord, 
your eating or drinking and anything you do, you do it according to thy word. You are friends, you are making friends and you do it according to thy word and you are having relationship, fellowship with other people. You do it according to thy word. You are doing every action of life anywhere you are. You are guided by the word of God. You take heed there too according to thy word. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it tells us thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy word have I kept in my heart. Thy word have I holding in my heart. Have I held in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It is that word that gives us real assurance that now we have the purging and we have the preservation in the way of the Lord. We're coming to the second section. That's the provision of liberality by the Lord. The provision of liberality by the Lord. We'll come back to the Psalm, Psalm 20, and we're looking at verse 1. Psalm 20, verse 1, the Lord hear thee. I'm talking about you, and I'm reading the word concerning you, that in the day of your trouble, even before that trouble comes, the Lord will hear you. In the day of trouble, the name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. You understand that? The same name of God, God Almighty, that defended the children of Israel before Pharaoh and defended them at the Red Sea and defended them before the Amalekites. That same name, having the same power, having the same authority, that same name of the God of Jacob, will defend you. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, he'll send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Strength is coming to you today. Strength has come to you already today and the Lord will empower you. And the Lord will take away every chain and every shackle out of your life in Jesus' name. In verse 3, it tells us in verse 3, it says, he will remember all thy offerings, everything you have done, the little and the big, everything you have done in the house of God, everything you have done for the service of God, everything you have done to alleviate the suffering and the poverty of other people, everything you have done to help anyone, everything you have done and you have offered unto the Lord. It says it will remember all thy offerings and accept thy bond sacrifice. Sila, that sila means pause and think about that. That nothing you have done for the glory of God will be in vain. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. The Lord will grant you according to your heart according to the desire, according to your demand, everything you are praying for, everything you are asking, the Lord is saying, he is your liberator, and he is your liberality, and he is going to supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He will grant you according to your own heart. He will fulfill all your counsel. Look at verse 5, in verse 5, we will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord will fill all thy petitions. Don't go away from that verse yet. Let me read it to you and make it personal. I will rejoice in your salvation. Can you say that? I will rejoice in your salvation. In the name of my God, I will set up my banners. The Lord will fill all my petitions. He'll answer your prayer. All your prayers, he will answer. And the Lord will do good unto you. Every area of your life, spiritual. Every area of your life, natural. Every area of your life, physical. Every area of your life, educational. Every area of your life, professional. The Lord will fulfill all thy petition. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Verse 7, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some trust 
in horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God that name has been given to you and Jesus said whatsoever you will ask in my name he will give it to you Your everyone this year and it's looking for number one you'll be in Jesus name Father, we thank you for this new day. Thank you for this service. Thank you for this new year. Thank you for what you've started doing already in every life. Lord, we pray that this year will really be new for everyone in Jesus' name. The sicknesses of last year gone. Oppression of last year gone. Harassment of last year gone. And the failure, the defeat of last year, gone in Jesus' 